We saw before that if you have a graph and you look at a point P whose coordinates I have right here and another point Q and I draw the line connecting those two points, that's the secant line, and I let that point Q get closer and closer to the point P, then we see that the secant line starts to look more and more like the tangent line to the graph. And this idea of one thing approaching another thing shows up a lot in calculus. So let's look at f of x equal to x squared minus 2x plus 3. This is a parabola. So it looks something like this. And let's look at what happens as we let x approach the value 2. So I'm going to make a chart. I'm going to look at values of x here and values of f of x, the function right here. And so we're going to let uh, the values of x get closer and closer and closer to 2. So this is the x-axis. So down here on the x-axis, I'm going to pick values of x that will slowly approach this number 2 right here. And if we look at the function, we know that the value of the function at 2 is 3. So we should expect that as we pick values that get closer and closer to 2, the value of the function itself should get closer and closer to 3. So let's see how this works. If I have x equal to 1, then f of x is equal to 2, and I'm going to leave a bunch of decimal places here so you can see how this works. If x is 1.5, then f of x is 2.25. 1.9, then I get 2.81. And I won't read them all out here, but you can see what's happening. As I get closer and closer and closer to 2, the value of the function gets closer and closer and closer to 3. Now look at the numbers I've chosen here. I chose uh, 1 on the x-axis, and that gave me the value of 2 for the function here. And then I had 1.5 and 1.9 and 1.99 and 1.999. So I'm getting closer and closer to the value 2 here from the left. And so we saw that as x gets closer and closer to 2, f of x seems to be getting closer and closer to 3. Now what happens, though, if I want to come from the other direction? I want to try getting closer and closer to 2 from the right. So again, I can make a chart with x and f of x, and this time I'll start over at 3, then f of x is 6, and then 2.5, I have f of x equaling 4.25, and you can see again how this works. As I get closer and closer and closer to 2, the value of the function gets closer and closer and closer to 3. And so uh, again, we see that we have this idea of something approaching something else. We see as we take values on the x-axis here that approach the value 2. On the y-axis, we seem to be approaching the value 3. So this is the, the value of the function. So the question is now, how do we express this idea mathematically? Well, what we say is the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 2x plus 3 is 3. So we read this just as I said there. Now, the notation works like this. We have this limb here, that means limit. And then we have x approaching some number. So if you remember on the x-axis here, I was looking at something approaching this value right here of 2. And so x was approaching 2. And we were approaching it both from the left and from the right, remember? And then this is the function right here. This is my f of x. And then this was the value that I had for the limit. And that was the 3 that's over here. Because as we get closer and closer to this point here uh, on the uh, x-axis, the f of x gets closer and closer to 3. So let's make this a little more precise. In general, we can say that the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l means that the limit as uh, x approaches some value on the x-axis here of the function will give you some value l that's on the y-axis. And there's two things to note here. We have to approach the same value from the left and from the right. And the function does not necessarily need to equal L at x equals A for the limit to exist. Remember, the limit doesn't care about what happens right at x equals A. It's just what happens as we get closer and closer to A. Now, this isn't real precise. There's actually a real mathematical way to state this definition. But for now, let's just get an intuitive feel for how this works. So here's another function. So this was the same parabola that we had before, except this time it's not defined to be... Uh, uh, at x equals 2, it's not defined 
uh, to be what it would normally be. Instead, we're redefining it. We're going to have a, a hole in the parabola, and we're going to redefine that point to be 5. So it would look something like this. So you see here that at 2 now, we have an open hole, and then up here we've defined it to be 5 instead. Okay. Now, the limit shouldn't change here. Remember, the limit doesn't care about what happens right at 2, so as we approach 2 from the left and from the right, it should still look the same. In fact, the chart looks exactly the same. There's no difference here because we're not considering what happens right at 2. We're just considering what happens as we get closer and closer to 2. So it still looks to be approaching 3, and this is from the left, and we can also do the same thing from the right. So since it does seem to work from both the left and the right, and we do get the same value, we can say that the limit as x approaches 2 of this function, f of x, is 3. So in this case, I redefined the function at the point x equals 2, but in order for this limit to exist, we don't even have to have the function defined to be anything at all at 2. So I could take this function and just say that it's true for anything except for x equaling 2. So we get the parabola again, we have an open hole, but this time we're not defining it to be anything else at 2. We just have a hole right here and then there's nothing else. Again, the limit shouldn't change because the limit doesn't care about what happens right at 2. So we still have the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x equaling 3. Now, what's an example where the limit fails to exist? How about something like this? So this is a piecewise function. f of x is going to equal 1 minus x if x is less than 2, and it's going to equal 1 if x is greater than or equal to 2. So it would look something like this. So if you notice, here is the line 1 minus x, and there's an open hole here because we have a less than, but not an equal to. And then we have a straight line here. This is at 1 for x greater than or equal to 2, so we have a closed uh, hole right here. Okay, so we want to know what's the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. Well, as we approach 2 from the left, the value of the function gets closer and closer to negative 1. So imagine uh, on the x-axis, we're getting closer and closer to 2 from the left. So we're kind of going in this direction here along the x-axis. What's happening to the function? Well, we're kind of going down here, and then eventually we get here. There's the negative 1. So we're approaching negative 1 from the left as we uh, look at the x-axis getting closer and closer to 2. We have the value of the function getting closer and closer to negative 1. And then if we look at from the right, we see that as we let x get closer and closer and closer to 2 from the right, the value of the function, well, it just stays at 1. It gets closer and closer to 1. Well, it actually just stays at 1 the whole time. So there's the 1 right there. So since these values do not agree, we say that the limit fails to exist.